So let's keep talking about millennials. But in this case, I want to talk from a different point of, of view. My goal today is to help you to think differently about Generation Y or Millennial. It doesn't matter. But this is always my, my first question. Okay, so Nigel talked about that it's people who were born in 80s, but there are different information, but it doesn't matter. I'm a millennial on the edge, but I'm a millennial. So do you think you can impact me in the same way that you impact them? Or not, or different way, because of the age. So I'm 37. You are 30, 33? 20s. Sorry, 20s. So you can sell a product in the same way me that them? No. And all of us are millennials. So I, th I believe in generations, but I think we have to divide every generation in segments if we want to create a really good impact. So the title of my presentation is How to Connect with Millennials. And first of all, I want to show you the cover of a magazine, Time Magazine. And let me read the me, me, me generation. Millennials are lazy, entitled narcissists who still live with their parents. <laughs> first of all, I totally disagree with this statement. OK, so some people say that millennials are lazy. Why? Because they don't want they don't want to work 14 hours per day, six days per week. So my father is 67 years old. He started work when he was 14. And he retired when he was 65. He spent all his life working in the same company, 12, 14 hours per day. And what I feel is he spent all his life working and he has no hobbies right now and i see this situation in a lot of cases so i think millennials that they want is to create an impact in what they are doing and to balance as nigel said personal life and professional life and live the life and most important thing be happy in this life because we just have one. So most marketing and communication fails. This is a fact. So we invest money, and not all of them is worth it. So let me show you some figures. 95% of new products fail. This is a, the source is Cincinnati Research Agency, Acupo. 98% of direct mail, no response. 98% of emails don't convert. And 60% of eight campaigns create zero brand lift. So the question is, they, the millennials don't want to see your ads. <laughs> they try to avoid you especially on the internet. It's because of that a lot of millennials use ad blockers to avoid ads on the internet. Pop-ups, a lot of ads, I don't want that you sell me in the same way that you did. So this is one of the most important things, but why? Why does most marketing and communication fail? So the answer is as well in the iceberg. So the iceberg, you can see only a little piece of the iceberg just over the water. But you don't see the, the, mostly the longest part is under the water. So 88% is hidden. Let me compare that with the mind. The mind is 95% subconscious. So that's the key. If we want to impact millennials, we have to impact the 
And we have to use emotions because the emotions is the only thing that you remember. We have a lot of impact every day, digital or not digital, it doesn't matter. But most of them, we don't remember. And it's all about trust. Maybe, I I'm sure, some, sometimes in your life you buy a product for any company, you trust in the product, you trust it in the company, and the company failed you. This is a metaphor for the relationship between brands <laughs> and customers. So the trust is the most important thing. It's like a, a couple. If there is no trust, it's broken. It's not, it's not working anymore. So for millennials, digital is an extension of their identity. You can see around you all the time this situation. We grab a smartphone and we take a picture of ourselves. And what we do with this picture or video? Upload to social networks. Why? How many of you use Facebook once per week? Raise your hand, please. Facebook. How many of you use Facebook? What kind of content do you upload? Say the truth. <laughs> Silly. Silly content. Yeah, it's real. And we upload a lot of content for create envy. I'm on the beach on vacation, and I upload the picture, and I don't write, but you don't. And I upload this kind of picture. So it's important to understand the social part of how millennials use this kind of, of technology. And I'm low in social media. Why? This is a research study. Why people share information on social media. And I like this one. 90, 69% like to participate and feel involved in things happening in the world. So millennials share what they think others will be sharing. Do you remember Ice Bucket Challenge three years ago? It was a social movement. If I say to you, the floor is lava, how many of you know what I'm talking about? OK. The floor is lava is a game played by people of all ages in which the players imagine that the floor of ground is made of lava and thus avoid touching the ground lest they get burned or otherwise injured. This is an old game, really old game, but these days it's a trend. A lot of people are creating videos, the floor is lava challenge. Most of them millennials, 1.5 million million views. And floor is lava challenge at Walmart, more than 8 million views, and so on. The floor is lava, GT5 online, the floor is lava football edition, and the floor is lava Minecraft. So these kind of social movements can be used by companies, by institutions, to connect better with millennials, because they spend a lot of time in networks as YouTube. So, do you think this picture is real? Millennials share what they want to be. The picture is real, but not the context. The real picture is this. <laughs> so, I, I don't say that all the millennials do that, of course. But what I'm trying to say is that most millennials create an, a virtual alter ego on internet, a new life. Because you see your friends so happy in a fancy restaurant, in an international trip. Oh, am I not? I'm shy. Oh. So when you upload a picture 
for example, on Facebook, and you have no likes, how do you feel? Bad. But if you have a lot of likes, oh, yeah, I'm the best. It's true. So our future revolves around ego system. What do you see? What, what thing, what weird is in this picture? The old lady. Why? She's looking with her eyes. And the rest of people know. They are looking through screen. We live a lot, a lot of moments right now through screen, recording all the time. I don't know if it's good or bad. It doesn't matter. But this is a reality. In this picture, you can see different ages, different nationalities, different generations. But they have one common thing. They are looking at the same thing, whatever. A person, an object, it doesn't matter. So personalizing the user experience is key to getting and keeping millennials as customers or as employees. So millennials think in terms of ecosystem. It's not bad, but it's true. Selfies, a lot of selfies. Do you know this app, MSQRD? It was a really famous app one, and a half, one year and a half ago. It was so famous that Facebook bought it. With this picture, well, a lot of millennials downloaded this, this app, and you can take pictures and create videos with a filter. So you can have the guys look like a monkey, winning a, an Oscar as Leonardo DiCaprio, or look like as Barack Obama. <laughs> and it's funny. It's ego, ego system. And even famous people. Cara de la Bean is a famous actress. She's a millennial. And for example, she uploaded this video on Instagram with this app. I'm Jeffrey. What would you like on your smoothie? Peanuts? Banana? Pop up? So 2.8 million views, more than 14,000 comments. I don't know why. But this is the reality. Sometimes we don't know what things happen, but it's happened. And at the same time, they want to share this moment with friends. So you can do it. Ecosystem, but you can share with friends. This is for you the best party ever. <laughs> Absolutely not. But I'm sure, do you think they're enjoying the moment? I think so, in a different way. So <laughs> do you know this? You remember this? We worked with this 20 years ago. But it's funny, because a research study concluded that most students click this to save their purpose, and they have no idea what it is. <laughs> so all of us use PowerPoint, Word, whatever. But the context is different. So we have a different background. So yeah, they create a different context. So we try to create a design for our customers, our employees. It doesn't matter. But they create their own path, a shortcut, because they want it. So we have to work together. We have to listen. And we have to work together to create the path that it works. And it get the objective, the goal, whatever the goal will be. This picture was taken just 12 years ago. So as you can see, a lot of people on the street looking at something. No phones, no smartphones. Well, really, just one damn phone here. This picture it was very famous. All of you know this picture. It was taken just four years ago. And they are looking the moment through the screen. But it's happened a lot of times. Do you think that we are in the same moment right now? Yes or not? No. We are here. This is a real picture for Hillary Clinton's campaign last year. 
most of the people, as you can see, are millennials, and they turn their backs to Hillary to take a selfie. So we want to be immersed the moment. We want to live the moment, and we, have to, we want to go inside the moment. Why not? I don't know what is going to happen in three years, but this is right now. If you have just one opportunity to ask a question to one of these men, which one would you choose? <laughs> I could choose the orange one. Why? It's different. Right. So for me, this is what's happening in general terms in a lot of institutions, companies, industries. They have kind of, or they do the same. So if you want to stand out, you have to make something different. You know the, it's Charles Latrobe statue in Latrobe University, Australia? Any one of you know this statue? This is the statue. Is it a normal statue? Yes, it is. It has a base and a man on the base. But it has just one change. It's upside down. And because of that, this statue is famous. Some people can say, wow, it's so, so bad that you turn on a statue. But other people say, wow, it's cool. I really like it. It's different. So okay, different points of view. So we have to think in different ways. We want to impact millennials. Two points. We have to add value, whatever it means. But we have to add value. And second, we have to personalize the user experience, personalization. So I want to share with you a personalized experience campaign. This campaign, it was done five years ago in Germany. This is the campaign, Bunnies at Home by Playboy. Maybe you are thinking, Juan, why don't you show me this campaign? It's not my field, it's not my industry. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The best ideas that you can get is not from your industry. Try to get ideas for any other industry and bring to yours. So this is a experience, this is a personalized video. I want to show you. essence of this campaign and how can you apply to your industry because you can so be creative is the most important thing so I'm going to talk about social personalization this is an example of how can you personalize in real time the user experience on a website this is a university in, in United States some Bonaventure University they personalize the information with information from the future student. As you can see here, as you prepare to leave Canisius High School, so the, the high school where you are coming from, and the city where you are coming from, click here to see how far away we are from Austin, Texas. 
How do you feel if you are in a website that personalized with your information? You feel better because you feel that the website is just for you. So you create a better connection with the brand, with the company, with the institution. So we have a big opportunity. Why not use, for example, video testimonials? This is an example of, of banks because you know that people tr more, trust more on other people than institution. So it's really important to create social proof because it helps us to create trust in our institution. And another, and another thing that I see a lot is friction. Create friction with millennials. Ronald Coe said that friction is the time, money, and effort lost in getting what you want. So a lot of time, we have to push our potential customers to get the conversion. So we have to avoid this. I'm going to share with you some kind of online communication friction that creates really high friction. One of them is required registration. So for example, you want to read an article? Do you fill in this form just to read an article? No. I'm sure that a lot of people say, no, I prefer don't read it. So is it necessary to do that for this? Hmm. Depends. but. In most cases, I don't think so. Or high friction and necessary steps in your checkout process. I have to buy something, go. OK, I know, maybe you need all these fields, but you can play with the usability, with the design, to make it easier. Or sometimes where you are on a website and you feel, what am I supposed to do here? I don't know, lack of information or breakdown in the conversion process. So this is an example of journey map. So it's analyzed in employees, customers, whatever, the good and bad experiences, the touch points, and try to improve the experience, the user experience with uh, different techniques. And all of you know this, this brand, Staples. And the tagline is, that was easy. It's funny, because when you tried to register, look at this, it's easy? So mm, something is not well connected. Or, oh, this is happened all the times. Because we have, a lot, we, we have to have a lot of passwords when you need to, to register in different websites. So you can be the same password, so it's not the best thing. Or maybe you have to create a new password more difficult. So, OK, sorry, but your password must contain an uppercase, a letter, a number, a haiku, a gun sign, a hieroglyph, and the blood of a virgin. <laughs> so what the hell is that? It's happened a lot. It's impossible to remember. So I know the security is really important. But you can have security avoid and avoid this high, high friction. So our goal in terms of online communication friction is create near zero friction. And I love how a company do that. All of you know this company, Amazon, in terms of usability. So this is so easy. It's very difficult to make it easier than this. So sometimes it's really good to look some famous company or how can they do things to improve ours. This is a typical Google product, so simple. This is a typical Apple product, so simple. One of the most profitable companies in the world. Why, in a lot of reasons, this is our company's app, our company's website. So in a lot of time, we make things more difficult than we need. So try to make it easier always and don't forget about YouTube this is the new Hollywood about youtubers so youtubers are more famous than celebrities and another actors actress 
whatever. And there are a lot of people, a lot of millennials, creating videos every day, sharing their lives. And they have millions and millions of views in each video. So how can we use that on our institution? And I want to share with you the business case for Facebook. You know that it's one of the most profitable companies. So this is so easy. This is just one sentence. Can't waste time with me. This is the business case for Facebook. This is true. And more than 2 billion people right now are active users on Facebook. This is crazy. But yeah, can't um, waste time with me. So this is why people came to Facebook. Farm bill? A lot of hours spent, or this, and it creates a lot of business around this book. It had a lot of sales. But the conclusion is the conversations matter. So why should millennials pay attention to you? We have to figure out this question. If you are not already a conversational brand, does it make sense to become one? And how can you stand out? I think this is a, one of the challenges that all institutions have in this digital economy or digital century. And remember, engagement is not a business strategy. It's not a business strategy. You have to set expectations and metrics ahead of time. And after that, that, ask yourself, is it realistic? Is it achievable? Is it focused? And let me recap with these six questions. First, can you answer the question only we? Can our culture nurture and sustain a digital transformation? Are we a conversational brand or can we be? Where are our customers? What is our source for engaging content? And what does success look like for you? So if you want to create a real good connection with millennials and create a, an impact, you have to think always outside of the box. Thank you. So we are all ready. Yeah, questions? OK. Who want to ask the first question? Yeah, it's because of that different kind of segments. In, so you can say, OK, all the millennials do that. All the baby boomers do that. It's because of that we work in micro niche micro niches, micro marketing, because I don't believe to in, in generations as a whole group of people. Yeah. Yeah, this is the stereotype. But I had a different question. I would ask what those younger millennials would ask you. Good question. Oh, good question. So it's a question to ask a question. Yeah. Very clever. <laughs> You're very good. Yes. Uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, this picture where the man was upside down and he was wearing an orange uh, shirt. So the thing is that companies have to be like the orange, uh, the, the men with the orange shirt. But they have to address the other ones. Because if they want to address the millennials, they are, uh, as you say, they are all the same. They all take selfies. They all use social media. They want experiences. They want. But the thing is that it's that correct because as my point of view, for example, uh, you know these, these YouTubers that right now are really famous. So I have some kind of uh, feeling that every time that they promote something, I hate it. It's, it's <laughs> because, yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if you see that they are doing something like stupid videos and these kind of things, and sometimes you are working really hard to get something and you don't get it, but they do. So sometimes when a company promotes it, their product with them, it's like, you don't feel that the company is good to you because they are not taking you that you'll be working hard and they are taking them. So I think that the approach, it's a little bit tricky for the companies right now. 
Yeah, okay. We have a really huge problem with YouTubers. Because right now, a lot of teenagers want to be a YouTuber. Because they, yeah, they earn a lot of money. They don't work. And even there are courses how to be a YouTuber. So I think it's, it's a problem. But when I, when I try to say it's upside down or, or the guy with the, with the orange uh, t-shirt, I mean about you have to be different. It's not about social networks. For me, it's about the ADN of a company. It's about the mindset of a company. So make a research about your competition and do what they don't. And I think innovation is to com is to is fail. So you have to fail fast and cheap. For me, that's the key of success. Fail fast and cheap because you are going to fail, of course. And you know that digital, you have two options, O or one. For me, it's the same for institutions and companies. You can be you can disrupt or be disrupted. So it's up to you. But if you don't take a decision, you take an indirect decision. And that's not the best one. Well, we have the great pleasure to have some uh, 50 millennials uh, in our organization. Because, uh, no, not 15, five zero. Because we share together with the UIPO the, uh, the intake of uh, the, uh, the program that we are running together. And uh, we learn a lot. I think that uh, on our side, uh, we discover with the millennials what you have underlined this morning several times that you have to give some space to those young people you have to give them some responsibility and you see that the results that they deliver are really excellent and they are enjoying taking up responsibility so uh, i see that it's an enrichment for us to welcome you in our organization i love that answer I, uh, my comment was uh, in the same direction. Uh, we actually enjoy uh, working sometimes, mentoring. Uh, uh, there is always space for improvement, uh, certainly. But uh, especially in what uh, uh, technology is concerned, uh, I learned from many of the tutors that there is a lot of mentoring going on. Uh, also for projects, uh, international projects, uh, outside Europe, they are very knowledgeable, so there, there is also a kind of, uh, of mentoring, even if we have not labeled it that uh, way yet. So that's uh, a feedback that I can uh, give. Plus, what I learned, I knew maybe, but I, w I became more conscious about it, it's the uh, expectations in terms of speed. Everything has to happen quickly, but really quickly. And I also thought, well, let's link it with their reality. And if you go nowadays and you open an internet page, this happens in less than a second. Uh, if they want to access a certain information, they access it immediately. It you are great in searching and finding out immediately the information that you need. So my uh, impression is that Millennium is high speed generation. And this is also what I, uh, I believe it's your expectation that things happen quickly. It was uh, also part of the panel discussion. So but don't you it. think that the world is faster and faster and faster? Definitely. ask the question as well in a minute, please do. Hello, um, I work in a big uh, law firm with uh, a lot of millennials, which is uh, a pleasure because I enjoy working with millennials. My impression is that some of them have like uh, an irreal expectations of life. They think that uh, the professional life can be like an amuse um, uh, park, so it, they, they want to be satisfied very quickly and they are not prepared for the frustration. And I mean, I've been working now for over 25 years, and you have to really have very tough times. So some of them are, uh, at least at the beginning, weaker than I think we were. 
but in general terms, I mean, I enjoy with them. They are very well prepared. They have many of them more social uh, conscious, which is very positive for our society, with environment, with uh, I mean immigrants, and I think is I'm very optimistic with these uh, new generations. But some of them I I see them uh, frustrated, which is very unhappy for me as well. Could you tell me a brief story, a brief story about millennials? So I have a friend who lives in Canada. He was 24 years ago, 24 years old, and he founded a startup four years ago. And he worked in the company with another 20, 20 millennials, all of them millennials, and they work eight hours per day. I was working with them, and they have a games room, and I measured the time per day that each people spend in the game room per day, one hour and a half, in, inside the eight hours. The, the conclusion of this story is that this company was sold to Yelp, the multinational, one month ago for 20 millions of dollars. So I don't know if it part of the, of the success is that or not, but what I felt is that they work in a very happy environment, relax, no pressure. And remember, we are more creative when we are not under pressure. <laughs> yes. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. No, no, they are not a good example for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I totally agree. Amazon, in terms of employees, really is not the tough. best one. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah, that sociability is really good, but not in the other part. Yeah.